Hello. Today I'm gonna discuss about cell injury and cell death. Specifically the mechanism, different types and causes of cell injury. In the next video, I will discuss about the cell death by necrosis and apoptosis. So, let's get started now. The ultimate goal of every cell in our body is to maintain homeostasis. However, in certain situations, due to the changes in their microenvironment, cells undergo structural and functional changes. Known as cell adaptation. These microenvironmental changes could be physiological, such as, increased demand and hormonal influence. Or they could be pathological, such as injurious agents like ischemia and toxins. There are four types of cell adaptation, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy and metaplasia. I will discuss about them in detail in another video. If the cells cannot adapt according to the changes in their microenvironment, they undergo cell injury. Cell injury could be reversible or irreversible. In reversible injury, if the injurious stimulus is removed, the cell can be brought back to its normal state. However, in irreversible injury, cell cannot be brought back to normal level, even if the injurious stimulus is removed. These cells undergo death either by necrosis or apoptosis. Causes of cell injury include hypoxia and ischemia, chemical agents, physical agents like electric shock, radiation and mechanical trauma, infectious agents like viruses and bacteria, immunological reactions like autoimmune diseases, genetic defects, nutritional imbalance and aging. Now let's discuss about the mechanism of cell injury. The first mechanism is ATP depletion and decreased ATP synthesis. Most often, ATP depletion is a result of hypoxia or toxic injury. Due to the reduced oxygen supply, the activity of the electron transport chain decreases, causing a reduction in ATP synthesis. We know that the activity of sodium-potassium pump depends on intracellular ATP. So, as the ATP level decreases, sodium-potassium pump activity also decreases. Sodium-potassium pump is essential to maintain the electrolyte balance between the cell and extracellular fluid. As the sodium-potassium pump activity reduces, consequently sodium ions tend to diffuse rapidly into the cell. Water always tend to follow sodium. Therefore, as sodium influx occurs, obligatory water absorption occurs, causing cellular swelling. Due to hypoxia, the activity of anaerobic glycolysis also increases. This causes accumulation of lactic acid inside the cell, causing reduction in intracellular pH. This results in reduced enzymatic activity. Anaerobic glycolysis tend to use up the glucose which derived from intracellular glycogen stores. As a result, depletion of glycogen stores occurs. Reduced ATP level also causes failure of calcium pumps. Result in excessive calcium influx. With further ATP depletion, ribosomes start to detach from the endoplasmic reticulum, causing reduction in protein synthesis. Second mechanism is mitochondrial damage. Mitochondria can be damaged by reactive oxygen species, hypoxia and increased cytosolic calcium levels. There are two major consequences of mitochondrial damage. One is, formation of high-conduction mitochondrial permeability transition pores. These channels allow calcium ions to leak out freely into the cytosol, causing loss of mitochondrial membrane potential. This impairs the activity of oxidative phosphorylation and causes further reduction in ATP synthesis. The other one is release of apoptotic proteins and enzymes, such as cytochrome C and caspases. These proteins and enzymes damage cellular components and trigger cell death by apoptosis. The third mechanism of cell injury is calcium influx and loss of calcium homeostasis. Normally the free cytosolic calcium concentration is maintained at a very low level due to several activation effects of calcium ions. Main intracellular calcium ion stores are the endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria. Due to ischemia and certain toxins, cytosolic calcium level can be increased. Initially due to the release of calcium from intracellular stores, followed by calcium influx through the cell membrane. As we already know, increased calcium levels can damage mitochondria and cause formation of mitochondrial permeability transition pores. Calcium acts as an activator for a large number of enzymes including phospholipases, which cause cell membrane damage, endonucleases, which cause DNA and chromatin fragmentation, proteases, which cause protein breakdown, and ATPases, which hydrolyze ATP.
calcium ions also activate apoptotic proteins and enzymes and promote apoptosis. The fourth mechanism is accumulation of oxygen-derived free radicals, also known as oxidative stress. Free radicals contain unpaired electrons and they are highly unstable. They donate or gain electrons from cellular components while causing damage to them. Here you can see in this picture, a normal cell is exposed to free radicals and they cause progressive cell destruction. Free radicals can be generated inside the cells by a number of reactions, including normal oxidation reduction reactions, absorption of radiant energy, inflammation, metabolism of drugs and other exogenous chemicals. Transition metals like ion and copper also have the ability to induce the generation of free radicals. Nitric oxide is produced by endothelial cells, neurons and macrophages. Although it is usually not a free radical itself, it can be converted into highly reactive free radicals such as peroxynitride ion, nitrate ions and nitrogen dioxide. In normal cells, there are mechanisms to deactivate and reduce the generation of free radicals. Antioxidants either block the initiation of free radical formation or deactivate already formed free radicals. Common antioxidants include vitamin A and E, ascorbic acid and glutathione. Metal transport proteins in the blood bind to transition metals and reduce formation of free radicals. Transferrin, ferritin, ceruloplasmin and lactoferrin are some common transport proteins. Enzymes like catalase, subroxide dismutase and glutathione peroxidase also play a role in reducing free radical formation. Pathological effects of free radicals include lipid peroxidation. Oxidative modification of proteins by damaging the active sites of enzymes, causing structural changes and enhancing their degradation. Free radicals also cause lesions in DNA by forming cross links between the strands and causing single and double strand breaks. The next mechanism is defects in membrane permeability. This means all the types of membranes, including plasma membrane, lysosomal membrane, mitochondrial membrane, etc. Membranes can be damaged by reactive oxygen species, which cause lipid peroxidation, decreased bisphospholipid synthesis due to ATP depletion. Increased bisphospholipid breakdown due to the activation of phospholipases and cytoskeletal abnormalities due to the increased protease activity. Damage to plasma membrane results in loss of osmotic balance between the cell and the extracellular fluid. Influx of fluid and ions and leakage of cellular contents. Lysosomal membrane damage results in release of their enzymes and digestion of cellular components. Mitochondrial damage results in formation of mitochondrial permeability transition pores. Now let's discuss about reversible cell injury. There are two features of reversible injury can be identified by the light microscope. They are cellular swelling and fatty change. As we have discussed about the mechanism of cellular swelling, let's discuss about the microscopic features of a swollen cell. This is a picture from Robin's textbook of pathology. It shows a normal cell and a swollen cell. One feature of reversible injury is increase in cell size and cytoplasm contains fluid-filled vesicles. Another feature is distension of endoplasmic reticulum and detachment of ribosomes. You can identify it in the picture also. Mitochondrial swelling. Loss of surface microvilli and formation of blebs. Loosening of cellular attachments. Accumulation of myelin figures. Myelin figures are phospholipid masses derived from damaged cell membranes. Ultimately, these phospholipid particles are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. These fatty acids can be calcified due to the high concentration of calcium ions inside the cell. Clumping of chromatin due to the increased acidity is also another feature. Fatty change occurs due to the abnormal accumulation of triglycerides inside the cell. This is caused by mobilization of fat from the fat stores. Commonly occurs in the liver. Some other tissues include myocardium, skeletal muscles, and renal tubular epithelial cells. These alterations in fat metabolism are commonly seen in patients with metabolic syndrome. Some other causes include toxins like alcohol, diphtheria toxin and carbon tetrachloride, and ischemia. All right. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I will discuss about cell death. Hope this video made sense. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. See you guys soon in the next video.